let's move on to shooting. Now, ships have got a range of five hexes. Now, the shooting arc from all ships is two hexes on the side, like so. There's two hexes. Then it goes one hex, then two hex, then one hex, and it proceeds until it's done a range of five. So that's one, two, three. That's the maximum range. Any ship in any of those hexagons can be shot at. So that can be shot at there. That can be shot at there. That can be shot at there, etc., etc. That's the arc of shooting. However, guns firing forwards or backwards have a different shooting arc. Guns mount at the front and back, who aren't pivot guns, can only shoot directly to the rear, if it's a rear mounted gun, or directly to the front, if it's a front mounted gun. Now, a pivot gun can shoot in the front 180 degrees. So if there's a pivot gun in the front of that ship, it could shoot 180 in front of there. 180 behind. So pivot guns are really good. So the side arc goes two hex, one hex, two hex, one hex, etc. That's broad side arc. Same for the other side. Fixed rear guns go one hex, two hex, up to five hexes that way. And the fixed front guns that way and that way. If the guns are pivot guns though, they can shoot in the front 180 if they're a front pivot, or the rear 180 if it's a rear pivot. So, for example, this ship here, this is the uh, Albemarle. Now, the Albemarle has got a medium pivot gun at the back. That's on the right of the picture. I put a little circle shirt. It's a pivot gun. That's a medium pivot gun to there. And on the front, it's got a medium pivot gun as well. It's got two pivot guns, both are medium. So the rear one on the right of the picture, shoot the 180 degree arc to the rear half of the ship. And the front one shoot 180 degree up to the front of the ship because they're pivot guns. However, if they're broadside guns, the fixed broadsides, like on some of the other ships, let me find one with fixed broadsides. The Virginia's got fixed broadsides. All those guns it's got there haven't got circles on them, so they're not pivot guns. There's a light pivot gun at the back. But that MMMM on the side is four medium guns, which are not pivot guns. So you shoot out the side of the ship at two hex, one hex, two hex, one hex, two hex, etc. The front heavy gun's a pivot gun. That means it can do the whole 180 front. So it can join in with the right broadside or the left broadside. But the, the guns without circles around them are fixed to shoot either just the left or just the right. Let's find another ship and have a look at that. Here's an interesting ship. It's the Governor Moore. The Governor Moore, the letter M, is it an M? Uh, yeah, an M on the right at the bow. It's got a front bow pivot medium gun, shoot 180 degrees. And at the other end, it's got a pivot light gun, which is nice. Not really powerful, but there we go. It's not a very expensive ship. That's the Governor Moore. That's the cotton baling you see there. Let's now carry out some gunnery. Now I'm going to write down an order for... So I've given the Albemarle that order. I know what it is, but I'm just going to pretend it's working right. And there's one for the Miami. Now in the game, the ships move alternately. So let's do this uh, Miami first. Because let's say they rolled a high dice. I turn the card over first. Ah, move slow and fire. Now, I could shoot from there or do this and get a shorter range shot. I think I like the shorter range shot. So here's what the Miami's going to do. It's going to turn left. It said move slow, so it can move one or two hexes. But suddenly it's in short range of the, uh, who's this, the Albemarle. The Albemarle's got a gun. Anytime anyone comes in one hex, you know, a free shot of them if you get five or six. There's one gun on the front that can shoot. Uh, let's roll that. Get a two. It doesn't get a free shot. Now, shooting is a whole bunch of dice. And it basically goes like this. 
every gun starts with four dice and it goes up and down by twos. So it's two more dice for short range, take two off if you're moving, two dice on for heavy gun, two dice off for light gun, etc. etc. Let's look at what we've got here. The Miami's got three medium guns and a medium front pivot. The medium front pivot is in arc, it's 180 degrees at the front. And the medium guns at the side can shoot because it's two hex, one hex, two hex, etc. So let's work out one of the guns. Everything starts at four. Modifiers usually in twos. Two more for short range, but the ship is moving two off. So it's four dice per gun. You shoot with each gun separately. You want five or sixes. Now, I think we've agreed there are three guns on the side, MMM, and a medium gun at the front. So there's four guns. Five or six. Gun number one gets no successes. Oh, dear. Gun number two, piggies are sixes, two successes. Gun number three, it's another one that's up to three successes. Gun number four, up to just three successes. Now, if that's a wooden ship, it just takes three points off the ship. However, it's an armoured ship, so four, five, sixes will deflect them. Three successes, one's deflected, so two points will be taken off the Albemarle. So whatever the Albemarle's on, let's say, for example, it's on 12, it now drops to 10. A 10 would be a critical effect. So you'd roll two dice for critical effect. You'd roll a five. And on the play sheet, a five for critical effect is there. A fire breaks out. So it's got an instant fire and inflicts a dice take one spot. So five more points from a fire. Crikey. That five more points will put it on another critical. So the opponent rolls again. That's a seven. Seven, it says gun destroyed. So the Albemarle loses its heaviest gun. Um, the heaviest gun it's got is a medium gun. It decides to take one off the back. So Albemarle's in all sorts of troubles. However, the Miami's had its turn. Now it's a turn for the Albemarle. As the album now starts, there's opportunity from the Miami, which has got three guns on the side and a front pivot. There's four potential guns needing five or sixes to shoot. Look at that. The Miami's done brilliantly. Three guns can open fire. Once again, every gun starts with four. Short range adds two. It's got a movement order, takes two off. So it's four with four guns, three guns. First gun is one hit. Second gun, two, three, four hits. Miami's good. Five hits. The Albemarle can deflect them on four, five, sixes. Oh, that's brilliant, isn't it? Five more hits. Well, the Albemarle's probably about done for. Let's pretend it isn't done for and it gets its turn. So the opportunity shooting's been done. Then it reveals the card and it says slow, speed and fire. Well, it's got one medium gun at the front. Well, it did that before it got sunk. Starts with four. Adds two on for short range. Short range is just one hex. But it's movement, it's got movement order there. So it goes down to four. Five or sixes. Oh, three hits. The Miami hasn't got any armour, so just three are taken straight off the Miami. Hammering iron is sequential, not simultaneous. So if a ship's sunk, it doesn't get to shoot back. If a ship's caught fire, it'll suffer all that damage before it gets to do anything. So it takes it in turns. That's how shooting works. Let's talk next about markers. Now, Peter Pig manufactured little metal markers, which go really well with the models and that. Here's a being on fire marker. There it is. If a ship was on fire, you place the marker on the model. A ship can only have one fire at a time. That's a ship with a fire marker on it. Not sure it shows up very clearly. Let's put it on a monitor. There we are. There's the fire marker. And that remains on the boat till the fire's put out. That's the fire marker. The other markers in the pack, there's one for the engine being destroyed. There's one for the rudder being put out of action. There's one for the pilot house out of action. And there's various others. Or there's one for battered. Now, these little markers are placed on the piece of paper, not on the model ship. So if this ship, whatever it's called, had the lost its engine, I put a little damage marker there. It's off the table so we can see it. If it's got pilot house destroyed, I might put that there as well. Might have a bad day and have the rudder as well. All sorts of troubles. So let's say it's got all those problems there. 
and it's got a fire as well. Beginning of every turn, you can attempt one repair on a four, five, six. So the player might say, hmm, I'm on fire. I can repair that. Pilot house, I can repair that. Rudder, I can repair that. The player would opt for what he wants to repair. My advice is usually try and get rid of fires because they keep burning. Four, five, six to get rid of that. Yes, so it takes the fire off. If you hadn't removed the fire, so now the dice take one spot damage. So that another one point of damage. So that anger burns on and on and on. However, they might say, no, I really want to get out of the way of another ship, so I'll try and repair the rudder. Only attempt to repair one thing in a turn. Some of these markers to remind you if the engine's destroyed, those sort of things that can't be repaired, but it's still there. There's a turret jam, but only applies to monitors, that sort of thing. But they're the markers. Other little markers we make is there's that's for on the tabletop. It's very small. That's what they call torpedoes, or we probably call mines these days. They're little torpedoes, little barrels full of gunpowder that can be detonated and all linked up. And they're detonated from the shore. They're not usually contact mines. Uh, we've got some other little bits and pieces here as well. That's a little David or a little torpedo boat. There it is. That's in the game as well. It's a semi-submerged little open top boat with a little mine or little explosion torpedo on the front on a stick and you ram into people and try and blow it up. Or well, just for interest, there is a heavy field gun, about 15 inch, something like that. And what else is there here? Oh, there's a submarine. That'd be something like the Hunley or whatever. You can see it's, it's a very small model. But it's more, more like a marker than a scale replica. But that's the Hunley semi-submerged. You can just about see the Hunley had all sorts of sad endings on several occasions. Going to look at a typical turn in the game. This is a very one-sided action. We've got the Confederate ship, the Bragg. The General Bragg has got uh, 25 hit points. Now, third rounded down is eight for battered. It only costs 685 points. It's got a medium gun at the front, a light gun at the rear. It's terrible. The monitor, conversely, this is the monitor, not just a monitor, but the exact monitor. Now, the monitor's got a turret with two heavy guns, 25 hit points, 1,345 points it costs. It's ironclad. Wonderful. It's not an even fight, but you just want to see how it works. Now, the monitor, because it's uh, well painted, you see that's the colour. The little pilot house at the front there, that's how the front, the monitor. And the brag, the front is this proper pilot house. It's a proper paddle boat. Now, here's the two bits of paper. I'll leave them in view, usually be off the table because it looks a bit messy. But let's have a little turn with these. Now I put the brag over there and the monitor I'll put down here on the right. It's not very fair, but then uh, the monitor just wants to win. Now let's say, for example, the monitor's picked some of these gun ports cards. Yeah, that'd be fair enough. So the monitor's chosen five gun ports cards. They should really be off the table on there with the cards and the brag has chosen smokestacks or movement cards once they're chosen they can then look see what they are now they get the turn starts there's only two ships here usually be about five aside the monitor looks at his cards and he's got a marvelous set of cards wouldn't you know it now i'm going to choose just the fire card because the ship's not moving it'll shoot better now, it doesn't mean it's totally stationary, it's just moving a little bit, nothing significant. So I'm going to put that face down secretly so the Confederate can't see it. But he does see the shape of the card is rectangular, so clue is there's going to be some shooting. Now, the brag, what's he got then? Uh, full speed and fire, full speed, uh, slow speed, full speed and slow speed and fire. Now, the problem for the poor old Bragg is that if this was a full game, he'd be skipping off into the distance to do some other task. Now, let's use a um, ooh, a slow speed and fire. Once again, the shape of the card tells the opponent, the Union, what's going on. Let's see who goes first. The Bragg rolls a five and a monitor rolls a four. Bragg goes first. Marvellous. If it comes in one hex, the monitor gets an opportunity shot. So Bragg's going to try and do some distance. So 
First of all, brag repairs. Looks at the sheet. There's no repairs. If, for example, had a, a broken rudder, a 456, it can choose and repair that. No, it doesn't want to. Now, I'm going to place this card. It says slow speed and fire, so you probably can see it. Now, when I look at the bottom of the brag, it's got a medium pivot gun on the front, a light pivot on the back. This is rubbish, isn't it? OK, so the brag opens fire. Now, its arc of fire with the pivot is the front 180 degrees, and the monitor is on that 180 degree. That hex is in it. Any part, it's in. So the brag initially claims four dice. Everyone gets four dice. Ah, but he's moving, so he loses two of those. So on two dice, it's for five or sixes. Oh, double hit. What are the Confederates? Now, the monitor would deflect medium shots on five or sixes. I'll check that's correct. Uh, there's a deflection chart here. There it is. For an ironclad. Medium gun, four, five, six. Heavy gun, five, six. Medium gun, four, five, sixes. Try and deflect them. They're both deflected. Well, well done. Well done, the monitor. Now, the brag has got slow speed. It's just going to go... Oh, it'll move just one this way. There we go. The brag is done. Now, if the monitor gets close, the brag can have a pop at it. But still a bit one-sided. The monitor first force says, are there any repairs? There are no repairs. Any repairs, you choose one of them to attempt to repair on a 456. Flips the card, fire. This is just getting silly now, isn't it? Now, the monitor, two heavy guns in the turret. Initial four dice, because everyone starts at four. Adds on two for heavy gun. There's no deduction for movement, no deduction for light gun, no deduction for being battered. It's got two of these, and it's looking for five or sixes. Two hits. And the second one, piggies are sixes, by the way. Pigs are hits. And that looks a six number. So three hits. Now, three off the brag. The brag starts the game at how many hit points is it down here? 25. Take three off. It's at 22. Now, that turn is over. Now, that's what we do for a new turn. The old cards are thrown away. Both players choose a card for next turn. The monitor chooses um, a move slow and fire. You don't want to get out distance. Put some cards back there. The brag secretly chooses... I'm not sure what he's got here. We're all terrible. I'll say full speed and fire. These gets a shot. Now, there's one dice per side per player to see who goes first. It's only one ship each. So the monitor rolls a two... And the brag rolls a five. The brag goes first. Now, in reality, if it's a full game, the brag probably scooting off somewhere else. But just for the sake of this little episode. First of all, it does repairs. There are no repairs. Turns the colour full and fire. Well, it's got a rear pivot gun. Oh, light gun. Now, it's a 180 degree arc. You can shoot any time you like. Any time. As you're turning, moving away. Fire the light gun. Every gun starts with four dice. There's movement, drops to two dice, and it's also a light gun, takes another two, but nothing can have zero dice. So when you do the modifiers, everything must end up at least 1d6. So it's 1d6 for that. Oh, it misses. Now the movement, full speed and fire. It should move away, but let's move in close just for sake of this video. So it turns once and turns again. This is just very silly, but there we go. When you come in short range, there's opportunity shooting. The monitor has two guns, both in the turret. The turret's got 360 arc. It needs five or sixes. It gets a free shot opportunity because the brag is so close. When the monitor shoots, always starts with four. Two more for heavy gun. Two more for short range. I look at the card. There is some movement. It's on the cards, you lose two for moving. The monitors are going to roll six dice at the brag. Five or six is one, two, three. Brag's not even a tin clad, I don't think. No. Okay, so that's three more off. It goes down to 19. The brag is down to 19. Grim, isn't it? Every time you hit a multiple of five, or you pass through a multiple of five, there's a critical effect. Now, five times the table is nice and straightforward. The monitor rolls 2d6 and scores a seven. Now, seven on the critical chart is a gun destroyed, heaviest first. That's marvellous. The brag will take its best gun, which is its front medium pivot. So it's lost that pivot. 
Deary me. Now, before the monitor starts his turn, are there any repairs? No. But also the Brad gets an opportunity shot with the front gun, which doesn't exist anymore, so there's an opportunity shot. The monitor flips his card. There we go. Move slow and fire. Well, as the monitor moves forward, the rear pivot of the Brad could shoot, but the monitor's going to shoot first. Now, here we go. Basic four dice per shot. Heavy gun makes it six, and this is done per gun. Short range, two more, but there are some movement. doesn't matter if you moved yet or not, it's your intention. You lose two. Monitor's going to do this twice. First gun gets two hits, two sixes. Second gun gets three hits. That's five hits. No deflections. Five off the brag puts it down to 14. Now, five times table, it's hit 15. So another critical effect. Good day for the brag. This time it's a six. We look up six on the chart and it says uh, gun destroyed. Marvellous. So Bragg's lost its other gun. It has no armament left at all. The only thing to note here is obviously this was a little bit suicidal because Bragg's not very good and monitors at the other end. It's superb. Don't get your ship sunk because it gives the enemy extra victory points. Merely by fleeing, Bragg will save some victory points. No point hanging around getting sunk. And the game also allows for ships that are damaged at the end of the game to sink after the game has ended as they limp home. That's a typical turn.